So a few weeks ago, we did a YouTube short on supports for your 3D prints. A lot of you guys have asked about those settings. So we're going to go ahead and go over those now. This is the video. This is this how you know when you finally, finally have, have supports dialed in. Um, this print was done for an Iron Man costume. It's the top of one of the gauntlets. Um, printed in ABS. And as you can see, even after just like that, printing in ABS, supports come right out. This is how so the key to this is before you go messing with support settings, you've got to have your printer dialed in. If you don't, you're going to have a bad day. You're just going to end up chasing your tail. So go through, make sure your printer's set up, make sure you've done all your calibrating with your slicer um, and all that. Otherwise, everything I'm going to go over here is a mute point. Now, these are my settings that I used for that video. Um, it's a good place to start, but you're probably going to have to tune from there. So, I try to, when at all possible, um, use snug versus grid. It's going to minimize the amount of supports that are generated um going to put them where they're needed and in no place else now overhang thresholds and stuff like that that's really going to vary based on what you're printing uh, some things are going to need more support some things are going to need less support depending on the what you're spanning and all that so that's going to come with a little bit of experience to look at it um but Obviously, you're printing it from your filament unless you're using a support material for an IDEX printer or something like that. Um, now, your Z offset, that's the space that is given between the top of your support material and your actual printed part. I've got mine set to 0.15. On top and on bottom so if your supports printing on something else to then go up to another part it's 0.15 this gives enough of an offset that the it can separate but when your part goes to print it's not printing into thin air of a complete mist mist layer um, that works pretty well for me obviously printing with rectilinear It'd be great once Super Slicer gets versus organic supports, hopefully in the next month, according to the GitHub. Um, pattern spacing. This is the distance between each of your grids. Um, I've got mine set to three millimeters. Um, that's a little bit further than standard. Uh, standard, I believe, is two, two and a half. Um, this makes the supports a little bit easier to crush. Um, they're not so dense. Um, and it just makes them easier to remove. But it's not so far that your bridging starts to sag on the top of your supports. Um, then you guys can take a look at that X, Y separation between the object and its supports. So that's, you got your, you got your thing that you're printing here. How far away from this wall does the support generate? So it's a spacing off of the part. Um, now, um, the support interface, I'm using rectilinear again for the interface. This is, these are the top layers that actually come up and touch your part. Um, I'm running three of those, 
three layers for interface. So it's going to, once it gets three layers away from the part that's going to be sitting on top of it, it's going to print three layers that are much closer together. Rather than that three millimeter spacing, I'm running a 0.4 millimeter spacing. Um, stock on this, I think, is 0.2 or zero. It's solid. I'm leaving that spacing there between those top lines. That way there is less support material physically attached to your part. That's going to make it separate cleaner. Uh, it's close enough together that, again, you're not going to have waves down into it, but it's, it's far enough apart that it'll separate cleanly rather than being solid material just like the pieces above it. And it also makes it easy to see once you pulled the support off if there's actual support material there. If you're printing that as solid, which most of the slicers do, is that top layer is solid on your, in, on your support material. You pull that support off, you can't tell if that material that's left on your part was actually support material or actually the printed part. Uh, this makes that painfully obvious, and then it can be brushed right off if it's still on there um, because you've got your Z offset spacing between them. Um, again, you're going to have to, once you dial your printer in, make sure you've got pressure advance set up, make sure you've dialed in your extrusion multipliers, um, your E steps, make sure. You know, if you can do input shaper, you've done that. That's actually the first thing you should do um, before all the rest. So supports are going to be the last thing you tune. But if you take your time and run a few test prints, uh, find something that generates a fair amount of support, but it's a small print, and you can test. Uh, you can run settings because these are going to, also vary depending on your filament that you're using. Um, these settings have worked well for me on both ABS and on PLA. I've had no issues with these settings. Um, these settings are also pretty much identical in Prusa Slicer. I don't know about Cure Slicer. I haven't used that since my first week printing. So Prusa Slicer though, Super Slicer that I'm using is a fork of Prusa Slicer. So it's going to be very similar. Some of the things, though, when you go through are reversed. Um, how they do it. So read the descriptions um, and make sure that you're setting it to do exactly what you want it to do. Uh, one of the big culprits for that is the overhang threshold. But that's all I've got. hope this helps you guys out. If you guys have any questions, let me know. i um, be happy to answer them. If you want a video going over tuning a printer, let me know. I'll make it. All right.